Okay, people, pay attention because I do not want to have to fail you. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the absolute best in art historical content and videos. You're in my world now, Grandma. And as always, I appreciate the likes, shares, and new subscribers. What's up? What are you doing? Now, as many of you know, my wife and I just moved to North Carolina from Iowa and my oldest son came out to visit with a friend of his and we had a little bit of a conversation that really inspired today's episode. Here's what we had to say. If the, like, let's say you could find out about any painting that was ever created, which one would you want to know about? She doesn't know any of them are. Okay. It's Starry Night. You want to know about Starry Night? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What is the number one thing that you wish that you knew about it? Like, what's the meaning of the picture? What's the meaning of it? That's a good start. So here I am, new studio space, new video, kicking it off with a little Vincent Van Gogh. What better way? I mean, I mean, this is the way to do it, right here. Let's get after it. So the story goes all the way back to a time when Vincent was just emerging as an artist and decided to settle down in a small town of Arles in the south of France. He puts down roots and really begins to emerge and was very prolific, very much a working artist. And he creates lots and lots of pieces. He would create portraits, still lives, he would do some study work, and he would even do some landscapes. One day, lad, all this will be yours. What, the curtains? No, not the curtains, lad. Well, what do I know? I color for a living, but I know that there are two Starry Nights. Now, one of those landscapes was the Starry Night over the Rhone. Now, he would create this picture in September of 1888 on the bank of the Rhone, which was only a few minutes of a walk away from his yellow house. It is said that he would put candles around the brim of his hat in order to see at night to paint this on location in the evening hours. He loved to be in the crisp night air, enjoying himself along the banks of the river, participating in one of his favorite activities of painting, obviously. Dead giveaway. That same year, Gauguin would move in with him for a very short period of time from late October until Christmas. Basically, in a nutshell, after an argument with Gauguin, he would retreat to the yellow house where he would have an epileptic seizure, resulting in the lower lobe of his right ear being cut off. Because it was unexplainable at that time, because there was no medical history, the townspeople were very much against Vincent. They were against these artists being in town, being somewhat of a nuisance and low class. And because of the psychological, manic depressive nature of Vincent anyway, he chose to check himself into a mental institution. Why would you do such a foolish thing? On May 8th, 1889, Vincent would check himself into an asylum. Again, there he was free to create paintings and work, and he was very productive during that time. However, there were rules against some things and not other things that he was accustomed to, and one of the rules that he could not really deal with very easily was the rule that he was not allowed to go outside at night. Sunset? Oh no! I, I mean... And so using some of his previous works as a guide and some of his observations of the early morning sky, he would create Starry Night as a way to remember his freedom to go out at night, the crisp, clean air that he loved to breathe in. And so he does not create this solely from observations, but from observations along with his own memories and feelings of that time. We see the wind blowing through the sky. We see the halos around the 
stars, which was very symptomatic of someone that was suffering from lead poisoning. Go back and check out my other video to get more details on that. However, moving forward, the painting was created in June of 1889. And some say that the sky is referenced from his view from his asylum window in part, again, as well as from elements from his memories. Within the sky, we see the moon, which depicts a sunrise effect on the moon, as well as that low bright star, which is likely the planet Venus. It is without question that Starry Night may be the most recognizable painting that Vincent had produced. And he produced lots of very memorable works, but this might be the pinnacle. It has been recreated by numerous artists. It has been studied by art historians for decades. It has been recreated in poetry by the likes of Tupac Shakur and in song by Don McLean. Well, I guess that's a tragedy right there. As I've elaborated on before in this and other videos, Vincent was a manic depressive. Vincent had his issues without question. So did he do it because he was crazy? Hell no. No, no. Nope. No, no. 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 Oh, no, sir. Oh, no. No. Uh-uh. But to say that he was crazy is completely absurd. And we can even trace back the notion that he was insane back to a specific point in time. As a side note, the whole thing about Van Gogh really being crazy is Nazi propaganda. F***ing Nazis. In the 1930s, Adolf Hitler was gaining power in Germany. The goddamn Germans got nothing to do with it! fascist chancellor had a very strong opinion of how morals and the type of society that he wanted to build, including the type of artwork that would be included in his society. You can check out my video on degenerate art for further information. However, for the sake of Vincent, I will rant on this for just a moment longer. Go on. Anything that was not idealized perfection or photorealistic by the eyes of Hitler or the upper echelon of Nazi politics was deemed degenerate. It was deemed less than. If it was not white Christian, it was not accepted. Even German Nazis like Emil Nolde suffered the consequences because of the style in which they created. Because of the style of painting, and because he put himself into a mental institution, because medicine didn't know the ins and outs of epilepsy, medicine didn't understand all of the side effects of lead poisoning, Vincent was labeled as crazy. Because he committed suicide, he was viewed as this slobbering madman that just created artwork on instinct without any sense of skill or any sense in his mind, which is utter nonsense. He don't know what he's doing. I don't think both of his paddles are in the water. This is a man that could read and speak multiple languages. This was a sensitive man that struggled to find love and acceptance in society. This is a man that threw himself 100% into his passion, not because of financial gain, because he received none, but because of the way it made him feel, and how many of us can say the same. So we should be looking up to Vincent, not condemning him as a crazy person, and not following along with the rhetoric of the Nazi Germans, because quite frankly, it has been proven over and over to be incorrect and motivated not by fact, but by the motive of controlling society and what they do. Thank you for allowing me to rant on that a little bit. Now let's move forward just a moment to something a little more general. One of the points of the conversation I had with my son and his friend was, why do we focus on something that everyone might recognize in an R101 video instead of something that nobody knows anything about? Now there are times in my videos that I go down a track that is less than mainstream. So here's a fragment of that conversation. But don't you think that people would want to know the basics? Like the simple things that everybody knows about before they go to advanced things? If you're listening to Nirvana, you're listening to 
to Heart Shaped Box and, and Smells it. Like Teen Spirit before you start listening to, um, you know, I don't know, the, the deeper tracks, you know, you're, you're not going to listen to Dive and, and Aneurysm and, um, you know, Molly's Lips before you listen to Smells Like Teen Spirit. Sometimes it is necessary for us to have a discussion about works that are very well known because of the misconceptions. We all understand Starry Night, but we don't know the meaning behind it. We all know Vincent Van Gogh, but the legend behind his name is full of myth and inaccurate information. Sometimes the things that are the most recognizable are the things that are the least understood. <laughs> I love that story. Bye-bye.